I might like to hunt for old school lures nearly as much as I like to hunt for bass. And on today's Collect to Catch episode of Retro Bassin, we're going to be looking at a recent purchase I made of this. An old school discontinued pack of Lunker Lure Rattleback Minnow Head Jigs. This little micro swim bait was way ahead of its time. Stick around as we head out on Lake Travis to see if this little guy can still catch fish today. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin, and welcome to the scaled down version of the Retro Bassin Studio. If you tuned into last week's episode, you know that we are packing up shop here in Texas and heading eastward to Florida. It's going to be a little bit of a transition period on the channel, so bear with uh, if the surroundings may not look as they usually do. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish it old school, talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment, well stick around, consider subscribing, and please be sure to hit that bell icon, otherwise you won't know we post a new video just like this one. It's funny, I was just having a discussion with my cousin Kevin, who recently got into fly tying. And if you know anything about fly tying, you know that it's one of those hobbies where it can be so consuming, you can literally spend nearly as much time creating as you do casting. Well, for me, I find the lure collecting similarly consuming and probably spend nearly as much time surfing the internet for old school lures as I do fishing with them. Well, recently while scanning eBay for old school lures, I came across two packs of this. A discontinued swim bait from Lunker Lure. It is called the Rattleback Minnow Head Jig. And because I got two packs of this, I was not afraid to open one up, which is just what I did. Here is the Lunker Lure Minnow Head Jig out of the package. And... Looking at it, it is hard to believe this thing is over 30 years old. It literally looks like a swim bait you would see in the catalog today, and I've got a feeling this little thing is going to be a fish catcher. Tune in till the end of the video, and we'll do a deep dive into my thoughts on this bait. Also talk a little bit about the history of Lunkalore. But for now, let's head on over to Lake Travis and see if this little dude can still catch fish today. All right, we are just pulling up to this windy little flat. It is a nice little grass flat, pretty shallow, and the largemouth have been staging up on here in preparation for the spawn. I have got the uh, Lunker Lure little swimming rattler swim bait tied on. It is a neat, finessey little bait. I've got it on my spinning outfit, and we'll see if uh, we can rip some lips, huh? <laughs> I don't actually want to rip their lips. I just like to hook them gently so I can let them go. <laughs> I can only tell you that the boat position is going to be a little bit tough because of the wind, but I do like it because it's probably blowing all of the fish life up on this bank. So, ooh, this could be a good one. Oh, got a fish. There he is. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's a big fish. Maybe it is. Oh, it actually is a nice fish. Wow. He just didn't think he was hooked. Woo, that's actually a really nice fish. Oh man. <laughs> oh, on the little swim bait. Come on, buddy. Stay pegged. Woo! Oh! oh! He did not stay pegged. Oh, there's another one on the swim bait. Oh, man. <laughs> Not as big as the first one, but a nice fish. Come on, buddy. Oh, there we go. Nice little largemouth on the old lunker lure. Oh, wow. That is super cool. Look at that guy. Uh, nice little springtime male largemouth bass on the lunker lure swim bait. 
I had one about three times this size, but he jumped off. I was, I don't know, distracted for some reason. But, but either way, uh, nice little bass. Woo! Let's get a few more. Oh, here we go. It's gonna be a good couple casts coming up here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, nice fish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was about to say, the hard part about fishing around weeds is a lot of times you're not sure if you have a fish or a weed. And there's a reason for that. I feel like most of the fish I get when I'm throwing little swim baits, that lure hits a weed, gets free, and then a fish hits it. So it's kind of like a series of different things that you think might be hits and well, <laughs> that happened. I was actually reeling that weed in all the way to the boat and uh, he was swimming toward me. And uh, <laughs> it wasn't until like, I almost pulled the line out of the water that I realized I had a fish. <laughs> oh boy. Well, if I had any doubt whether or not I had the right lure tied on, check it out. He absolutely choked that swim bait. Uh, nice little fish that's definitely still smaller than the first one that I lost, uh, that I retroed, but yeah, they're getting a little bit bigger, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll let him go. Where we're fishing is actually about halfway between the boat and that shoreline, and that's the little weed bed that he came off of. Yeah, buddy. I feel like the next, I don't know, five minutes of fishing are gonna be primo. I'm kind of just set up on a perfect drift. I can see with my Ray-Ban glasses, a lot of nice weed beds up ahead, sort of spotty weeds too. Yeah, if I can uh, keep this drift going, I'm gonna get a fish too. Oh, and there's one. <laughs> oh, he's off. Oh man. Well, thought I had a fish. probably had a fish. That's a fish. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, that's a good fish too. Woo! Yeah, buddy, come on in here. He hit at the end of this cast. Oh man, he was really far out. I have no idea how big he is though. He might not be that big. Ooh, that's a big old white bass. There we go. Look at him. Oh, ho, ho, ho. wow, that is a monster, monster white bass. Wow, look at that. That is a monster white bass, and yeah, he smoked the old lunker lure. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. You know what? That is actually the perfect size swim bait for a white bass, huh? got that nice little fine wire hook. Yeah, that's a beauty. Oh man. If I knew how to cook these things, I'd probably uh, I'd probably get on that. <laughs> See you, buddy. Somebody hit deep. Oh man, he's gone onto the boat. He's gone onto the boat. He's either very smart or very dumb. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> wow. Um, I feel like these white bass keep getting bigger and bigger. That thing is a monster. And uh, yeah, he hit right under the boat. <laughs> oh man. Check him out. What a uh, beautiful, healthy looking fish. Man, that guy is, uh, he ate it. Oh, get that out. Let's see. <laughs> I got him in the net, but he wasn't coming off. 
He still might not come off. <laughs> there we go. Uh, another real pretty white bass. Man, that's, uh, that's about as big as I've seen. About as healthy as I've seen, too. Unfortunately, just as soon as we started and I got on a good little swim bait bite on that grass flat, some pretty spooky looking clouds rolled in. So I hightailed it over to this marina and hung out for a few minutes. Um, it looks hazy out there, but I don't think we're at risk of a thunderstorm uh, anymore. But yeah, that was definitely uh, a little bit of a tense moment on the old retro bass and show. Ugh, I hate thunderstorms. Anyway, I'm gonna head back on over here to that grass flat, hopefully set up. Maybe those fish have cooled off uh, in the 15 or so minutes that I've been gone. And I'm gonna keep working that lunker lure through the grass. I think that lure is gonna be the ticket. It is just a nice little finesse swim bait. It's got a really nice wiggle and it is pretty weedless. So I like all those things about it. We're gonna head over to this whole little stretch. Hopefully the wind hasn't changed direction too, too much. And hopefully I can go find that two pounder that I missed. Man, that was a nice fish. Ah, what a bummer. All right, final spot of the day to try to get another fish or two on the old lunker lure. Wind is really picking up. It is a totally a different day than it was earlier. Uh, just you can see that the front is definitely passed through. It is sunny out, it is windy. Just all around a very different day. I have been doing pretty well in this pocket of Lake Travis and I'm hoping that there are still some bass, largemouth and white hopefully stage up, getting ready to spawn. Oh, there's one and that's a large mouth. <laughs> Woo! He jumped right into the net. There we go. <laughs> uh, not a big fish, but it's good to get another on the line. Man. Check him out. There we go. Nice little uh, late day largemouth on the lunker lure. He, uh, he hit it pretty good. Luckily, I did not uh, retro that hook set, so that's exciting. <laughs> there is the little mini swim bait, and there's our bass. Nice, see you buddy. Well, I don't know if my luck has run out, but unfortunately my time has. So we're gonna head on back to the studio and take a closer look at this bait, the Lunker Lure Rattlehead Minnow. All right, that was a blast catching some little largemouth and white bass on the Lunker Lure Minnow Head Jig. That first fish I lost was definitely the big one of the day, so that's a little bit of a bummer. But I am glad that we at least got a few fish on camera for you guys with this little bait. Before I give you my thoughts on this little swim bait, we'll take a little look at the cataloged history of the rattleback line from Lunkerlore. So you can see here in this uh, old school package, there is the classic Lunkerlore shape. It is really a unique design back in the day with a rattle chamber and definitely one of the loudest rattles on the market at the time. And while this version of the rattleback might be unfamiliar to most, I guarantee you everybody has heard of this one. Yeah, this is an old school Denny Brower Lunker Lure Rattleback Jig. And this is really the one that started it all. Here you can see that rattle configuration. It's actually the same exact one that is in this bait, and I'll show you that in a minute. I'm not exactly sure what year the Denny Brower jig was released from Lunker Lure, but the first catalog example I could find of that bait was the 1989 Bass Pro Shops Master Catalog. In that catalog, along with some other Lunker Lure baits, there's a nice little one-third page spread dedicated to Denny Brower's perfect jig. 
This is a neat little jig that in 1989 came in six different colors and was available in three sizes from a quarter ounce on up to a half an ounce and was sold for $1.27. Interestingly enough, there's no mention of the rattle in the jig itself, but I've got a feeling these new baits from 89 had that rattle in them. I don't happen to have a 1990 Bass Pro Master Catalog, but by the time 1991 rolled around, Lunkalure was heavily invested in the rattle back line. First is a third page spread dedicated to Denny Brower's perfect jig. And as you can see from the inset photo, they really highlight that built-in rattle chamber. According to the description, Denny's rattle back imitates the clicking of crawdads to attract those biggins. Now, Lunkalure was heavily invested in the 1991 catalog, and they've actually got a full one-page spread dedicated to the expansion of the Rattleback line. While, of course, they've got some real estate dedicated to the original Lunkalure buzzbait, there are two very unique additions to the line. The first is the Vibration Rattler, sort of their version of a spinnerbait, and the second is the Lunkalure Lunkalure Rattler which is a soft plastic version to body of their buzzbait. Here is a new in the package version of the Lunkalure Rattler, and you can see the original Lunkalure buzzbait blade with that very unique rattleback body. Let's give it a listen. <laughs> but missing from that catalog and the pages of the catalog was this bait. Now, I can't be sure this did not come out years later in a different catalog, but being that this version of the Rattleback was never on my radar, I gotta think this is just one of the lesser known ones that never got the play of the other baits. And that is what makes this bait so unique. I know looking at this bait today, it really looks like a standard swim bait. I know it's got a nice little minnow head profile, little paddle tail, and yes, that nice little clear weed guard. But by today's standards, there's really nothing remarkable about this bait. However, in the early 1990s, swim baits like this were just not promoted on the national level. In fact, the only swim bait I could find in that 1991 Bass Pro Master Catalog was a version of this, <laughs> the old Mr. Twister Sassy Shad. So the fact that this bait was swimming around Lake sometime in the early 1990s is kind of insane. We did catch a few fish on the old minnow head jig. Let's talk about the good and the bad with this bait, whether or not I would fish it again, and perhaps some things that I would improve upon it if I could. First, on to the good. This thing has a great little minnow profile. I don't actually know the length on this. I do know it is a quarter ounce. Looks like a, what, little two and a half to three inch bait right there, but it's got a really nice profile. I was fishing it around some heavy stuff today and very rarely did I catch any weeds. I think the bottom of this bait definitely scooted over the tops of vegetation and the weed guard definitely helped out on top. It's also got a nice tight wiggle. Some other baits, hollow body baits, tend to have much more of a, I would say, serpentine action, really getting aggressive. This thing barely, barely moved, and you could really see it on the underwater footage of the bait. So I would say it's definitely one of the more finesse swim baits that I fished. It cast well, it hooked fish well, and overall, I liked it a lot. If I had one critique of the bait, and I think you might have seen this a couple times on camera, but if I would actually miss a fish or sometimes even catch a weed, this is hard to pull down now, but in the water, that tube body definitely slides down the bait a little bit. So if I had to redo this bait, I probably would add a little bit of glue or some kind of anchor there to keep the body up a little bit more snug to the head. That's the only critique, it's a small critique, but beyond that, I think this swim bait was truly ahead of its time and definitely caught some fish. In the comments below, let me know which Lunker Lure in today's episode you'd like me to fish with next, or if there's another bait on your radar that you'd like to see in a collect to catch episode of Retro Bassin. By the way, if you're looking for more old school content, click right here. 
Otherwise, I'll see you right back here, same time, same place. And until then, keep the carpet side up. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastards.